Well, all righty, we'll call the meeting to order and uh, get started with our agenda for, for the evening. And the agenda provides for welcome and introductions uh, for, for about five minutes of that. And uh, so we'll go around and, and any uh, uh, introductions or whatever I see on the, we do have updates uh, under the new business area. So we'll wait a second and, and, and do the update. And part of that will be, uh, I think we have a sharing session on the day uh, concerning uh, your thoughts on this past year and how the uh, committee has worked and, and what you think about the good things uh, that you think the uh, committee brings about. And so we'll do that. But anyway, we'll go around the room. I'm, again, I'm Pastor May Leon May, we're going to the Destin Community Church, uh, Air Denomination Ministry of Lions, Language and Vicinity, and LK Foundation of Alaska, and so forth and so on. Thank you, Pastor May. Yeah. I'm Thea Agnew Bevin. I'm the chair of this committee, and happy to be here. Um, yeah, we thought it'd be fun at some point today to hear kind of one thing people are you know, glad that we did this year and maybe even something you're looking forward to in the next year would be great. Uh, should we go to Sonia on the phone? Hi, happy holidays again, everyone. Um, my name is Sonia Hunt and um, I am with the school district. Um, happy to be here. I'm really excited about the work that we'll continue to do um, and I'll pass it on to the next person. Great, we have Shelly also online. Sorry? Okay. Oh, so does she want to introduce There's the Shelly's iPhone listed. Great. Go ahead, Shelly. Hi, this is Shelly. I am the legislative and policy analyst for the assembly. Oh, great. Glad you're here. Jasmine? Jasmine Aker, it's records clerk and staff to the committee. Hello everyone, I'm Celeste Hodge Bradley with the Alaska Black Caucus. Thanks. And I'm Candace Bell representing Sage Alaska, a group of LGBT elders. Hey everyone, this is Beth Rosano, State Refugee Coordinator at Catholic Social Services Refugee Program. Lori Pickett, Alaska Literacy Program. We can just do it. Okay. Alrighty, thank you. Thank you guys for for uh, the greetings and what have you. Good to see all of you uh, in this meeting and session or whatever. And we'll proceed to unfinished business. And uh, first up is the finalization of the committee charter, which uh, I thought we had already. Uh, done and are completed, but there was no uh, notation of uh, motion to anything. Through the chairs, to... uh, the municipal clerk, Barbara Jones, just asked that you did an official motion um, and finalized it until you reviewed again. Great. All righty. So with that being, with that being said, uh, since we have it and you have it and all of that, we're going to obtain a motion to adapt what we said we thought we had adopted. So moved. Second, second. Moved and second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Oh, hold on one second. Oh, excuse um, me. Just one thing, just to remind us that we added is um, the last page scheduled to review and update the charter. So we said that in January 2023 we would review it, and then again after the first six months. So maybe we can just kind of have that to look at it to get together again, or look at it between then and now and then, in case we have anything we want to change. But and then one month, we're going to look at this next month. Does January 2023 make sense? Um, I think it was Taffy that suggested that we do it after the first three months. So okay. just in case there were any changes that people wanted to suggest. Well, because even though we're officially approving it today, we really felt like we approved it three months ago. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, makes exactly. Sense. Exactly. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, we thought we had approved it three months ago. And uh, and so the, the update would have been three months and then six yes. months. And that's already been approved. Yeah. And so, yeah. Any further discussion? 
Hear it not. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed to like sign. I just have it in a disorder, and so we have finalized uh, for now the the charter for our committee. And uh, I see the next thing we had was the new committee member that was coming before uh, the body on today, uh, the name anyway, of uh, Myra Kimmel. And, and uh, Lori, you want to speak to this? Oh, yeah. I think you had suggested this a while back. Um, Mayor Kimmel is somebody who has been um, dedicated to our community for as long as I've been working in it and um, has expressed interest in joining and so I brought her forward. This is that if you want more information on her. She's currently the executive director of the ACLU for Alaska um, and has been a longtime board member and uh, founding member of Alaska Institute for Justice and has worked to support the immigrant and refugee and asylum community um, very strongly for decades. All righty then. We thank you for that. Uh, and I guess at this point, since the uh, charter provides for bringing forth the names and then voting on it, uh, we would entertain a motion uh, to receive from Mayor Campbell upon the uh, uh, introduction of uh, Miss Lori, and uh, and then we'll you know once we get a motion in there and a discussion will happen. So moved. All right, moved. Second. Moved and second uh, to receive Myra Kimmel as part of uh, the uh, Anchorage Equity Committee of the Assembly, and uh, any discussion. I support it. It should be great. Here is no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed is like saying, as evidence, so it is, it, so it is ordered. Alrighty. Municipal budget discussion and the uh, rise for calls for update on committee budget request. And uh, that request, as I know it, was declined. And uh, would you like to speak to that, Mr. Rivera? Can I just give a recap of that? Yeah. So um, at our last meeting, um, Felix brought the, the opportunity to us that if we wanted to, we could squeeze in an amendment um, to the budget to see if this committee could have some funding that would allow us to, in the end of the discussion, where we came to was honoraria for committee members. Um, some planning and some community engagement funding. Um, and happy to have others who were at that discussion kind of speak to what we talked about. Um, and it was a little tricky because we were met on a Thursday. Felix needed to have it by Monday at the latest. So we wrote up the request. Jasmine sent it out. Um, but there wasn't a ton of time for people to really digest it. And then it went forward. So likewise, there also wasn't a ton of time to um, meet with committee, or sorry, assembly members and kind of introduce it a little bit more formally, um, or maybe informally. Uh, so that was that was kind of what happened. Um, Celeste and Candace, you are both here. Do you want to speak to that? Um, I still believe that we can secure funding. And I, I not only because I feel that we can uh, secure it, but because we need it really to um, be an effective um, or, let's say organization, but committee. And there's so much um, that we can do with the, the funding. And we mentioned a, a couple of things, um, but the honorarium was just the minor piece. I, I mean, there, we know that um, organizations are out there doing this, doing some great work. And, so, and sometimes when they try to secure or seek funding, the process is so daunting that they're not able to uh, be successful at it, which means the community doesn't get an opportunity to see what could have happened uh, if there was some funding. And we're not talking about a lot of funding, but sometimes you know, organizations want to host uh, an event and requesting uh, $500 or $1,000 to successfully have their um, event. And so we would be in a position to um, offer some funding so that they could have the event and not have them go through this process uh, that sometimes 
organizations don't even apply for because the process is just too hard. So I just wanted to offer that. But I, I, I think there's an opportunity, and I, and I believe um, this committee should secure funding if they really want to be successful. Uh, piggybacking on that, that was honorary, uh, that was community engagement, uh, in the facement of that on it, but, and also, uh, uh, fun, ma'am, sir? Oh, planning. Yeah, planning yeah. part of it uh, as well. And it was only uh, $60,000 or whatever, and so, but anyway, it uh, didn't pass. Candace, do you want to share anything before Felix? No. And if I could just add to, I did watch the assembly meeting, and Felix did a great job. Assembly member Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we didn't do our homework. I mean, I, I didn't send one email out sharing the need and why it was so important. Uh, for this to pass, and, but I, I honestly believe if we really took the time and shared some of the great and amazing work that could be accomplished with uh, funding, it could happen. It, it could still happen. Yeah, thanks. So uh, I think for my part on this, I'm just going to read the email that I sent out to the co-chairs right after the vote. Um, so, I'm just going to read it verbatim. Um, unfortunately, the body did not approve the amendment. It was voted down on a vote of five in support, seven against. Chief reasons, as I saw it, was that one, some members of the assembly felt blindsided. Two, some other committee chairs expressed concern that this was funding for one committee instead of having a discussion on funding for all committees. And three, the funding was recurring instead of just one time. We will try again during first quarter budget revisions in April. We need to come up with a concrete plan and bring in the other members if we hope to succeed. Um, do you want to share a little bit more when you say concrete plan? Like, what is what does that include, or what does that look like for you? Yeah, so uh, I know this committee last time we met had a really lengthy discussion about. Um, wanting to come up with a fully fleshed out plan of how this committee would spend the dollars and um, really just come up with a budget for this committee that would be presented to the assembly for consideration. And so um, I think that is something that would be beneficial and coming up with that plan, presenting it to the assembly, and being willing to have some of that back and forth with the assembly that will likely inevitably happen. Sorry, just what's the time frame for that? Yeah, so I think like we talked about, um, the assembly considers the first quarter budget revisions in April. Um, so typically, you if you seriously want to get something in the first quarter of budget revisions, you want to have that before the body um, and at least getting the body to seriously consider your changes in March so that they start to become aware, start to understand this is a change that might come forward in April and they can start to digest it. It takes a lot of work to do what you're asking us to do to ask for money. So do you think that there's any appetite for like the pre the pre work funding, like a one time smaller amount so that we can have some facilitation money for that? I mean, who's gonna who's are we working in committees to build budgets and to come up with plans and bring it back? Like all that stuff is real work. Sounds like we need an itemized budget for sixty thousand dollars, and uh, and you said uh, submit it to the others. When you mentioned others, were you talking about assembly members as others? Yeah. So um, yes, I think there needs to be discussions. Um, so this committee needs to bring in the other assembly members. I think if um, we want to get approval from the, from a majority of the body. 
So, and by that I mean, this can't be just something that's thrown at the assembly and we hope that they will understand it and that they will approve it. I think we need to develop more of that relationship, have more of that dialogue with them. Now that the 577 split, it did not seem that we were that far off, but uh, how deep was the concern relative to other committees not having funded versus this committee? Yeah, I don't know if I really feel comfortable speaking to how deep the concerns are. I would say if um, folks want to get an understanding of some of the concerns from my colleagues, I would have conversations with them. I don't really feel comfortable speaking for them. And just a reminder, we're gonna, we have time on the agenda to kind of hash this out a little further. So if we kind of feel like we've got the update on what's happened so far, we could probably keep going. Or is it a deal in I'll wait until we get down to that part. I wanna maybe talk about what we've done or what we should be doing, but I'll wait till we get to that discussion. Um, let's see, next on the agenda is committee updates. Um, are there updates or announcements or events that members want to share with everyone? I'll share. So the Alaska Black Caucus has a couple of events coming up. We of course have the Betty Davis African American Health Equity Summit that's going to be on February the 18th at the Betty Davis East Anchorage High School um, beginning at 10 a.m. There's opportunities for vendors and as well as ads um, and so we'd love to see folks uh, at that event. And then we're also hosting the Martin Luther King um, Jr. Cultural Celebration on January the 16th at the Betty Davis East Anchorage High School beginning at 6.30 p.m. And so that's a free event. In fact, both events are free. And so we'd love to have support on that as well. Thank you. Um, is there any announcements or updates? No, we don't have any events. I will just update the committee that uh, last year was the largest arrival um, of refugees in the state of Alaska in the state's history of the Refugee Resettlement Program, and Anchorage received the largest portion of those resettled refugees, and we have already enrolled over 100 people this year, which puts us right on track to have another banner year. So it's a timely time to be thinking about this and this committee to be thinking about what are we doing with all those highly skilled um, capable refugees in our economy and other things, so I think there's a lot to talk about. But boy, we could do something with that $60,000 probably, so we'll talk about that. So yeah, it's just a really, really high resettlement year, and we should continue to expect that to be the case this year. All right. We are doing our Scrabblers Scramble for Literacy event on um, February 4th. Can you just explain what that is? Um, it's where you play with a team. You play fun word games on a Scrabble board with a team at your home or at a location you pick, and then we're on Zoom. The different teams are on Zoom. It's a lot of fun. People really enjoy it. We have a, it always sells out. So um, you can look at our Facebook to find that. Um, and then um, I think it was really telling what Issa shared about the numbers of people who are com that are coming and the and the numbers of people who are who come with great skills and are looking for employment. So I think anything we can do around equity and hiring and working with employers, because we're finding even when situations like people need bus drivers and we send over people that have been driving trucks for years to work as bus drivers are turned away at the door for their language skills because people aren't prepared to, to work with people or to find ways to be creative to even fill the, the need of the jobs that they're desperate for. And um, there's just ridiculous barriers. And GEDs and, um, and, and people who just don't understand accents working in HR, that I think they'd be really great if we could work on that, because it's a win-win for everybody. In, a, in addition to the MLK uh, Junior Cultural Celebration, uh, the MLK Foundation proper is hosting its annual commemoration celebration on the 15th of January, 3 o'clock p.m. at the Denina Center. 
uh, Pastor Kent Redfern, Modul and uh, some of the global global assembly is going to be the keynote speaker. Miranda Curtis, a nationally known artist, uh, African American artist, is going to be uh, headlining uh, that celebration as well. And uh, we are soliciting ads for the commemorative booklet and our donations. Uh, to the MLK Foundation, and uh, we, we deal with food bank, clothes, homelessness, and, and a number of things. And so, uh, anybody willing and wanting to uh, secure an ad in our commemoration booklet or send in donations or what have you, or even sharing the celebration on the uh, 15th of January, 3 o'clock at the Finance Center. I don't think I have any updates. We'll wait on Felix. Um, welcome, Pana. Good to see you. Pana, do you have anything you want to share for updates? Just listening and learning. Thank you. Glad you're here. Sonia, anything from you? Okay, we can come back. Great. Um, and Shelly's here as an assembly Based on person, right? Okay, cool. Okay, let's so over to you for assembly updates. Great. So there's been a lot going on. So I think rather than me just blab um, about what I might be interested in, I guess it would be helpful for me to know what this committee is interested in, and then I can provide, try to provide sufficient updates. So I'll start. As I watch the assembly meetings, I often feel like um, equity needs to be in the audience. I mean, it seems like every subject, there's concerns surrounding equity. And I just feel like if there was a way that this committee, and I'm just brainstorming right now as I'm talking, could somehow be an arm or a leg or something where we could be asked about whatever the issue might be um, to get our viewpoint as it relates to equity. Does that make sense? Yeah. That does, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to speak to that. So what I'm going to do now is just make a list of if people want to go around the table and ask you to speak on anything, I'll make a list and I'll speak on all of them. Any special requests? Yeah, I just would like to... I have a question about that. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sonia. Um, to Celeste's idea, would that be through testimony or are you thinking more formalized report? Either or. Either or. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say, I know the assembly just voted on the increase for the shelter um, at the Sullivan, and I know that that continues to be something that the assembly is working on with the administration to try to figure out. But it's deep-seated equity issues in homelessness and individuals experiencing homelessness in our city, and especially. And the burden is great on that Fairview community where there are a lot of, I mean, you don't have to look far into redlining history in this city to look at Fairview as one of the examples of where we went really wrong here. So what is the assembly? I know you're working on it, but what updates can you provide to us, especially as we not only think about the residents living in the shelter, but also the residents who call that neighborhood home, right, where there's deep-seated equity issues. And I know the assembly was working very hard to try to keep that shelter low numbers and it appears that we once again will not achieve that this winter so um, just some updates about where you think the assembly is going and then especially anything you think this equity committee could be doing to try to you know we hear a lot about the, the neighborhood and i don't think we're hearing about the fairview neighborhood about the issues of equity in the fairview neighborhood i think we're hearing about the neighbors who have nice homes around that <laughs> Sullivan arena or others and i just think that's kind of being missed in what appears to be the conversation Laurie, any topics you want to update on? 
I apologize. I've been on vacation, and so if there's Felix, I trust you. If there's a couple issues you think you should bring to our attention that I wouldn't consider blabbing, I'd be welcoming of those. Mm -hmm. I don't specifically have a, have a question of a relative update, but back to what uh, Celeste was speaking about a minute ago and not really being up to speed on the Senate protocol as far as the meetings per se. Uh, my question would be what would be the thinking on impromptu participation? Um, the issues I'm curious about, one is the alcohol tax revenue. Um, there's a pretty robust theory of change that I think has been pretty well accepted that has a lot of uh, input and strong focus on equity, but I just haven't seen alcohol tax money coming out yet. So curious for updates on that. Um, we had an inquiry from Shauna Heigna at the Coney Corporation about hate speech during assembly meetings, so I'm curious if that's been discussed or addressed. Um, I, I, I kind of had written down something really similar to what Celeste brought up, but it'd be awesome to hear a request to the committee from the other assembly committees, like what are the things that you would like input on, and then um, similar to what Issa brought up, what, what updates are there about some of the the funding that the assembly kind of got out on the street outside of the administration to develop more housing and shelter beds. And Hannah, do you have any um, questions or topics for Felix for updates from the assembly? Not at this time, thank you. Thanks. And Sonia, did you have any? Not at this time, thank you. I would just like a little update on what we think is happening around the, the management and, and just the quick turnover of the key, key staff and how, what the impact we think is, that's going to have on us. Okay. okay can so, I add one more to it? Uh, why not? Go ahead. And you know, what in the world is the status of the chief equity officer? I mean, are we, because I saw something where if you're having issues with uh, discrimination, you contact the OEO office. The OEO director was term, well, you know the situation there. So people are now going to the ombudsman. I mean, what is going on with the Office of Equal Opportunity? The fact that there is no employee, I mean, there's one individual that that's just and then where is the chief equity officer thanks all right so i'm going to go ahead and try to address each of these quickly because i know you only said five minutes but it's part of the agenda i think we've already eaten that up okay so um i think the idea of equity needs to be in the audience, and equity needs to be addressed. Um, the assembly needs to have more of a tie-in with this committee. I think those are all ideas that uh, both Cameron, sort of speaking for Cameron, since he couldn't be here today, uh, both Cameron and I agree with. I think for most of my colleagues, um, they don't really know what this committee does. Um, I don't think they really understand this committee. Kevin and I have tried to talk to them, but I think there's a difference between us sort of talking about um, the, the mission or goal of this committee and the assembly really understanding what this committee is for. Just that that link, that bridge really hasn't been built. So um, I think that needs to be done more explicitly and um, or frankly, I think it would be great to, as sort of an idea to throw out there for the co-chairs to come to an assembly rules committee to have a discussion with the entire assembly, um, whoever shows up to the rules committee, I should say, um, about this committee and um, formally share the invitation that if your committee that you run want to um, request 
advice or um, request review of a policy or idea that your committee is considering, um, that this committee would be open to that. So I think developing that relationship directly with the co-chairs and the assembly, I think, would be important. So that's that's my thought there. Um, on I'm going to save homelessness stuff for last. On alcohol tax, um, so the alcohol tax revenue, um, that money is sort of slowly but surely getting out. It is, you know, it's unfortunate that a lot of the grants are just getting out very recently for the 2020-2022 calendar year. Um, I think the discussions that we are having is to see if we can change the um, format uh, of dispersal of these funds from an annual basis to a biannual basis, meaning funds um, can be used and expended on from your grants is from 2023 to 2025 or 2024 to 2026, whatever whatever year it begins on. So that's a discussion that I think we are having to allow easier dispersal of the funds. And um, we're also trying to see if we can wrangle the purchasing department or whoever it is that's, that's muddying up the works um, to figure out why it is so difficult and so different for this particular funding stream than, uh, than other funding sh streams. And, I, think, I don't know why exactly that it is. I don't know if it's because it's contracts and not grants, and grants are easier to manage. I, I really don't know why this administration has made it so difficult to administer the alcohol tax, or more difficult than anyone had envisioned. So I think that's, that's just things that we are working through the different avenues just to make that easier to get the money out. On hate speech, um, so that is one of the things, actually, that I think, um, uh, even though I don't know if there's been a formal communication, I don't know, several assembly members are hoping, and I'm glad that it's on the agenda, um, to get guidance from this committee, sort of understanding the legal framework that we are working on. Um, we are government. We are not a for-profit corporation. So it is very different type of conversation when, when, you have, when you talk about government and free speech than it is about a for-profit corporation and free speech. And I don't know if people understand that. Um, very different type of conversation. So, um, but that said, I think we are very interested in getting thoughts and advice around the, the hate speech issues. Um, on the admin personnel, um, so when it comes to the administration, yes, there we have probably a record number of acting individuals in pretty high profile positions. Uh, we have an acting OMB official, an acting, which is a very important position in my opinion, an acting municipal manager, a very important position, an acting chief fiscal officer, a very important position. So. Um, you know, a lot of these important positions are turning over quickly. We have a lot of people in active positions, and it's just, um, I think it's creating a lot of confusion for assembly members of um, who is actually responsible for what and who, in the end, has the authority with so many acting positions. Um, you know, who is, um, I guess for lack of a better term, who's pulling the strings, who's making the decisions. Um, so that's that's something that we're particularly interested in, especially when it comes from a sort of a fiscal perspective and, and looking at contract approval and who's signing over contracts and um, the signatory authority is the term that we use a lot. Um, so that's that's something that's, that's of interest. Um, as much as, obviously, there's a certain level of personnel issues that the assembly really uh, we can't dive into because they are strictly personnel issues, but I think there's also a host of other issues that we can dive into, and I think Assembly Leadership put out a letter uh, earlier this week, a couple days ago, uh, talking about the Assembly Leadership's interest in investigating 
whatever matters we can with regard to some of these sudden personnel changes and some of the impact that they might be having on taxpayers. Um, will these personnel changes slow down? Are we going to have a more stable administration? Um, I don't know. Uh, I, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if there continues to be changes in shifts in leadership of uh, different departments. Is that going to have an impact? I, I think it will. I think we're already seeing that impact happen with um, some of the degradation of the chain of command and, and who's making decisions and um, possibly some people making decisions that is way above their pay grade. Um, then when it comes to the Chief Equity Officer, OEO, um, the Chief, Chief Equity Officer, I think as folks know, is always invited to attend to these meetings, and I think the Chief Equity Officer has attended a couple of these meetings. Um, beyond that, as far as I can tell, the Chief Equity Officer is doing a lot of community organizing, I guess to put it gently, work. Um, but in terms of what the Assembly envisioned the Chief Equity Officer would do when we created the position some years ago, um, I would argue that the Chief Equity Officer is not doing that. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, it's because of the court case that the Assembly lost. Um, we have very little say in that anymore. Um, when it comes to OEO, uh, I think other than what's sort of in the public knowledge, I don't have any other information about is the administration hiring, looking at hiring unfilled positions at OEO or not. I, I do not know. So um, that's something that I can approach. I will say, I think we have uh, breaking all kinds of records. I'm fairly certain that we have a record number of vacancies throughout the municipality in all different departments. So I'm not surprised that we're having difficulty filling different positions like some of the uh, vacant OEO positions. So. Can I remind you to go back and talk about homelessness? <laughs> yes, thanks for that reminder. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about homelessness in three different ways, and I'll really try to be quick. So first is housing, uh, which is the solution to homelessness. So I'll start with that, and I'll try to end with that as well. So the assembly is, um, there's three possible hotel conversions that are in the works, really. Uh, one is less of a conversion, more of a just open the damn thing up. Um, and that one is the Golden Lion, which is already a municipally owned facility. Um, the administration does appear to be working collaboratively with the assembly, which is an odd thing to say, but I do think it is actually happening when it comes to opening the Golden Lion. The administration has put forward the different repairs, which all are reasonable based on discussions I've had with prior administrations. They expected these repairs to happen. Um, and there was actually one thing that's slowing things down. It was unexpected. There was a fire at the Golden Lion not that long ago that is slowing that, that wheel from turning. So I think once we um, uh, understand what repairs we need to do based on the fire that happened and then the additional repairs that we already knew we needed to do, um, then I expect those repairs to start in January. And then after we get the repairs done, we need to deal with some of the legal foundational issues because the municipalities never run a housing project before. We, we contract others to do it, but we've never actually owned a housing project before. So um, we need to deal with some of those legal um, hurdles uh, of, of sort of wrapping our, our mind around doing that. My hope, though, is that both the line will be open sometime in um, late winter, early spring. I, I, I would I would be surprised if it's open before March or April. Um, so that is my thought on the Golden Lion. We have two other hotels that are not it, that have nothing to do with the municipality, thankfully. Um, but th even those hotels are still taking a little bit to open up. And those are two hotels that the um, Anchorage Affordable Housing and Land Trust, a new entity that's been formed in the last year, um, they are 
managing opening those two hotel conversions. I can't give you the name of the hotels, but there are two hotels in Spagnard that are going to be opened up for housing. And um, so at timeline of those, one of those we're hoping to get open in January, February time frame, and then the other one in April, hopefully. Um, so I think between those three hotels, that will be a significant amount of housing that's brought online over the next several months. Still going to leave a bit of a delta, but I think it's still a bit of a delta when it comes to if you look at the emergency shelter plan and how many people are being um, served under the emergency shelter plan, and when that turns off, how many people are going to be kicked out onto the streets because they no longer have a bed. Just a bit of a delta between that and the number of beds that are going to be brought online. So we still have work to do between now and April. Um, moving on to the Sullivan. So as folks know, the Sullivan. Um, has been in the media a lot. The assembly approved an increase in the Sullivan from the 150 plus 50, uh, so 200 to 360 at the request of the administration, in large part because the administration failed to find any other possible solutions besides just dumping people into the Sullivan. So, uh, sort of being in between a rock and a hard place, or as another assembly member put it, uh, making a Solomon's choice, we decided to. Um, Oh, uh, acquiesce to the administration's request to increase the capacity of the Sullivan to 360 with some guardrails in there. Um, you know, there was a little bit of kerfuffle yesterday and today around whether the administration would actually do that or not. And um, for those of you following Twitter, which I don't know how many of you are, you probably saw some of that kerfuffle on Twitter that managed to get up in the media. And apparently, this administration is tweeting policy by tweeting or tweeting by policy, whatever you want to call it. Um, but we did manage to um, sort through that issue, and so the Sullivan will be turned on as we implemented it for 360. And now, talking about the neighbors, um, so the assembly did appropriate funds for mitigation in two different ways. One of them is, um, and, and mainly for. <laughs> The, the neighbors surrounding Sullivan and sort of um, out uh, maybe like a couple miles, sort of if you want to look at the whole radius around it, a couple miles outside of Sullivan as well, mainly looking from a, a safety perspective and a, a public health and safety perspective. So the two parts of the plan that the administration is implementing based on the dollars that we gave them is a, a public safety perspective. Um, with uh, using APD overtime hours to do more APD patrols in the surrounding areas. And then from a public um, health perspective, they are activating Healthy Green Spaces, which is a Parks and Rec program, to deal with any trash or graffiti or any other issues that need to be dealt with in that radius of, uh, I don't know exactly, I'm just putting out two miles, I don't know what the administration chose in the end, outside of the Sullivan. Um, so that is the what we have funded, and that is the tactics that the administration has decided to use based off the funding that we gave them to achieve the goals. So the so the assembly was approached to fix an illegality that was brought to the attention of the uh, chief administrative officer by the recently fired municipality director. And so you guys were approached to fix that illegality by upping the number. Uh, at the Sullivan. Is that kind of the backstory? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know here. I will say from our perspective, yes, the administration was uh, knowingly, illegally um, increasing the capacity at the Sullivan rather than coming to us to request a capacity increase. Um, so the administration brought this forward to rectify their illegality. I don't know if the administration agrees with that perspective, but that is I think, the perspective that most assembly members have. Basically, yeah. And yeah, I mean, yeah. um, I'm 
guessing there's probably some questions for Felix. We also do just have 35 minutes and we have a couple things of substance on the agenda still. Um, what's the will of the body? Do you want to spend some time asking questions on these topics? I have a general yes. question that I'd like to ask all of us relative to every single one of these questions. I'd like to know where is our voice and how do we use it? Because we'll be ineffectual just sitting talking in this room about these things. So if we want, if we believe that OEO positions should be filled, how do we make noise? That's my question. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I think I agree with Maybe if we, because we only have so much time, I think it kind of is to discuss plannings and priorities, but also I think it's like, you know, this thing about hate speech, it's like, yeah, they would like to maybe get a, like, so how do we as a committee plan to do that, I think, is the question. So I'm not, I want us to not go totally off the agenda, but I'm almost like, can we have that discussion? Can we have the discussion about, I mean, clearly this is up on the website, everyone knows we're here, but the assembly hasn't shown up, besides Felix and Cameron. So what are we doing that they don't know we're here, or how do they, how do we get the word out? How do we go? I mean, I can go stand in the queue and go talk at the assembly meeting. Like, we can all do that. But what are the other things we could be doing? I'm suggesting maybe we think about that as, like, the priority. Because otherwise, what are we doing? I think that's worth having a discussion about. So can I suggest maybe for this item, it sounds like we want to talk about what are sort of, like, immediate, like, ways that we can react and weigh in on hot topics, basically. And then there's probably some maybe longer term things that we want to set as priorities. So are those two things? Well, one thing I was going to chime in on relative to what, what I'm hearing is, and, and, and relative to what Mr. Rivera stated earlier uh, about interfacing, he mentioned the chairs interfacing with the rules committee members or assembly, what have you, relative to what we're about and all of that, what would be the probability and the possibility of having that committee come to one of our meetings where we can interface with them as a group? I have one more question on the hate speech issue. It's not really a question, it's a statement, I suppose. And that's, um, I believe that the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States is a government agency, correct? Do they allow hate speech on the hate speech on the floor of the Senate and the and the House of Representatives? And if not, so I think it's a little bit apples and oranges. And, and sorry, may I get into it just a little bit briefly? Okay. And here's why it's a little bit apples and oranges, right? So the Senate, the U.S. Senate, and the House of Representatives may have rules among its members of how they are going to deal with speech among. And, Sorry, I just want to acknowledge, like, I see the frustration in people's eyes. I get it. Um, but, like, I, part of my job is to make sure that the municipality doesn't get sued, right? Like, that's part of my job. So, um, so there may be rules uh, of determining what, what, in those chambers, what the members amongst themselves can or cannot say, and they have ways of enforcing those rules amongst them. There's a difference, though, between that sort of so a small group of individuals and a member of the public, right? So there's a very big difference between a member of the public who is not part of the government, and they have come to the government to petition them, the government for something. Then you're talking about a whole different set of rules and a whole different of what we can stop, what we can't stop, what we can't allow, what we can't allow between an individual, a, a member of the public, who is coming to their government to petition for something. I totally get that, Felix. Then change the rules. It's just frankly intolerable. I'm sorry, my comment. So, so what are the rules that allow that? Yeah, so um, here's, here's what I'm going to suggest is um, I guess first, is, is that something that this committee is interested in sort of taking up time to do now, in which case you're going to have me to talk about that, and, and I am not an expert, so I will do the best that I can based on the knowledge that I have. Um, so that's, 
of one, and then two, if the, this committee is interested in having a longer discussion, I can certainly bring in attorneys, but um, just so you know, you bring in attorneys and we're gonna have a, a different discussion, which I think is important, but just so you know, it's gonna be a different discussion when you bring in attorneys. So I, I think that, I'm wondering if we can do that. Like, I think it's an important topic and whether we like make that the assigned topic in January or something else, I think that's worth it. But can I ask a clarifying question? I mean, I get free speech and I get people come in and you can't just turn the mic off when they're in the middle of talking. And like, I don't like it either, but I get it. But assembly members have the right to respond back about what they think that speech was without it infringing on that person's right to speak. Do you agree with that, Felix? Is that true? And it, and if that is true, you know, is that even if we don't like the outcome and lawyers just think that we can write a, a strongly worded message to assembly members about our expectations from them when they hear hate speech from the diocese, how they can respond back to that. And some members have slightly done it and others have basically sat back and let the community spew it. So is that true? Do you believe that's true, that assembly members have the right to respond back and at least call it out? Because we, we're not going to stop hate speech in this country, but these are people who work hard to call it out when we hear it. We're not going to sit and listen to it. And I think in some ways the frustration from my viewpoint is that members of the assembly are sitting up there and, and listening to it and not addressing it. And what it does is it sends the message in this community, that's how you can talk about people who live in this community instead of addressing it. Do you think that there is a, a line there where some of the members could address it? Yeah, so I think that's that's part of what the assembly is interested in getting the advice from this committee on. But what I've told the assembly, and I think part of the reason why is because we have struggled as a body to find a, a real solution. And so here's what what there's a few different scenarios here. So there is someone says something, and um, a member. I'm sorry, I'm going to get technical, but this, I think this is important to understand. So if someone says something, a member gets in the queue because they want to, typically when a member gets in the queue, um, they're asking a clarifying question because that's, that's really all we're supposed to do when someone comes to speak before the assembly is ask clarifying questions. So a member gets in the queue and they start to speak. And as an example, I think sort of what inflamed this conversation, the most recent version of this conversation, was what an individual said who was from Hatcher Pass and, and Mr. Dunbar, Forrest Dunbar, responded to them. So Forrest got in the queue and he responded directly to that individual. There was a point of order raised though because the, the, the way that the body works is you're only supposed to ask clarifying questions. So a point of order was raised saying we're not supposed to debate with members of the public. And that is a factually correct point of order. We're not supposed to debate with members of the public. So the chair had no choice but to say, I agree with that ruling. We're not supposed to debate with members of the public. So Mr. Dunbar, please stop. And, and that is what happened. So, so that's, that's one thing. The second is um, after all members of the public are done speaking, then it's the assembly's turn to talk. And we can then address the individual comments that are made without perceiving to be debating with a member of the public and following our, our rules and, and what we're supposed to be doing. I think what's sometimes unsatisfactory for people in, in that case, in that scenario, is that that can happen 10 minutes after someone is done speaking, or it can happen days because a public testimony on an item lasts for six or seven days and you know we're on public testimony for two weeks and then after two weeks of people spewing hateful things then we're finally addressing it right for a lot of people that's unsatisfactory they want us to address it much earlier um so so that's scenario two so scenario one is to despite the bullet and address it and just be ready to get called out for it and be forced to stop scenario two is address it at the appropriate time, which is after everyone has had their chance to speak from the public, or scenario three, which is the one that I have been pushing forward, but I just don't know if it's getting traction, um, which is to for members to call a moment of personal privilege. So during a moment of personal privilege, the chair only authorizes one of those per member per meeting. And that is something that you can use at any time. You're, you can request it from the chair, and the chair is typically 
pretty judicious about saying yes, you to have it if you've only used it once. And during that time, you can say pretty much as long as you're sort of within the rules of what you should be saying, you can say whatever you want. So an individual could, let's say, um, going back to the Dunbar uh, situation, an individual could, uh, so Forrest, rather than getting in the queue to try to uh, ask a clarifying question, he could have asked the chair, can I please have a moment of personal privilege, and then d did what he did, and it would have been appropriate, and he would have been called out for it, or a, a point of order wouldn't have been raised because he's not debating, he just has a moment of personal privilege. So to me, those are the three sort of avenues that we have right now to address it. Um, but I would say if you were to talk to most assembly members, they would still argue that um, that they want something more clean to address it. They're just, um, just with the whole complication of what we can or can't do or the type of speech that we shouldn't or shouldn't impeach, impede on how we can deal with these situations. I think the assembly still wants more. Can I, can I suggest that we do identify this as the topic we want to focus on in January? Yeah. Okay. Does it just have to be one? Well, um, I think it depends how, how deep we want to go on it. So I think if, if Felix was going to bring lawyers or other people that would be helpful, we might want to make sure we had at least 45 minutes for it. Yeah, because I, I would like to, and I heard, um, Felix, you talk about the current chief equity officer, but I'm talking about since we don't have someone in that position doing that work, what are other avenues that we could take to actually get someone to do the equity work? Yeah, I guess quick response to that would be to, we would so probably we would need to hire someone who would be under the assembly branch, so the, under the legislative branch with a different title. So they would be equity analyst or, or so it's pretty um, fluent on these. That maybe she can come up with a better title. Um, but they would do the real stuff that the chief equity officer would be doing just under a different title and under a different branch of government so that the assembly would be directing them rather than the executive. Um, that's not a discussion that the assembly has had, uh, but certainly uh, a recommendation from this committee, I think, would be interesting, or a discussion from this committee would be interesting. I love it. Maybe just a follow-on question from there. So, since all of the other committees are chaired by assembly members, at an assembly meeting, do you get direct reports from each committee? Um, and if so, should this committee have a point on that agenda where we're giving a report? Or what is the formal relationship between the committees and what happens at the regular assembly meetings? Yeah, thanks. So if you've attended assembly meetings, you know that at the beginning of a meeting, we go through a whole bunch of assembly members giving reports and talking. One of the reports that we give at the beginning of the meeting is a chair's report. And so we go down the dais and depending on which committees that you are chair of, you speak about the committee. Cameron's been pretty good about speaking about this committee, although, um, yeah, so he, he has been pretty good about uh, speaking about this committee, uh, and namely, you know, what are the big things on the agenda of this committee and when is the next committee meeting. Um, but if there is interest of, rather than having Cameron or I sort of do that, of having one of the co-chairs do that, I'm sure that's something that we could accommodate. Is uh, is the assembly actively requesting this committee to deal with the hate speech issue? Yeah, so I think, like I said earlier, there's not a, a f I'm gonna sort of translate actively to formal. So no, there isn't a formal request from the assembly, but I have heard, uh, you know, in discussions with the assembly chair, with the vice chair and with Cameron, that there is interest in having this committee weigh in on that and provide guidance on that issue. Okay. And then, then, then my other question would be for us, and that is, if we were to put this as the main topic in our uh, subsequent meeting, then what do we do with what we 
we're trying to accomplish with the budget that's coming up in April with time to prepare for that. That's why I was asking the question. Does that just mean we get that one and, and, and then that's it? For uh, There's so much. <laughs> yeah, I guess what I was going to suggest is it sounds like what might be something we could accomplish today is just to kind of get a list of the topics we know we're interested in weighing in on and that could be communicated back. Does that seem like an okay approach? I mean, I guess in terms of what we have on the agenda, planning and priorities for our first quarter budget revision, I guess what I'm hearing from Felix is the more we can, um, you know, put together, I think you said kind of a plan and a budget that we would present to the assembly. It seems like maybe having some, some topics and kind of just prioritizing a few things that we want to have a more formal role in, in helping decide. I mean, that's kind of been in line with our charter, too, in terms of um, helping advise the assembly on kind of important topics. I, I think it's really important that we weigh in on the, the discussion that's current. I mean, we know that the homeless issue is important. It's happening now. So that needs to be, in my opinion, a priority. I also know that a lot of this stuff, this equity work that we're talking about, could we could benefit if we had someone like a chief equity officer. And, and so if I'm hearing you right, the chief equity officer, the way it was originally designed or maybe with the way we'd like it to be right now, would be somebody whose day-to-day -day job is to both within the administration and maybe as kind of a liaison with the assembly is like doing this work. Absolutely, and I feel like the chief, and, this, and then I'll be quiet, the chief equity officer could be, should be here. I, I just think I'm hearing, and, and I don't know if I, I don't have the answer for sure, but you know, this is the hard work with, this is the hard work with most things, but you definitely write equity. It's like, this is pressing, this is pressing, this is pressing, they're all pressing. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that maybe some of the work of this committee is really us saying, like, they're all pressing and acknowledging it, but digging deep into one to get one out of the way. And whether that's saying the first one needs to be, because like right now I'm hearing this is urgent and we need to respond to it, but this body has not decided how we respond to things. So we're basically ineffective. So if the first step is really having a meeting about how are we going to respond? Is it formal letters signed by the co-chairs that gets delivered? Is it, we're gonna have meetings and then we're gonna decide who's gonna go speak on behalf of this committee at assembly meetings. Because we haven't done that, we are largely ineffective. And so I, I want, I believe there's urgent matters happening, but because we're relatively disorganized, we're not urgently addressing them. And so like if hate speech needs to be addressed and it's urgent, but it needs to be addressed in April because we need to get money, we need to get a chief equity officer because we need to, this meeting's an hour and a half now, right? And so like, I don't know how to, I hope I don't sound like, I'm just wondering like, what are we, what can we do most effectively so we could write a letter from this group. There's a process where it's written, co-chair send it out to the committee, we approve it, and it actually goes in front of somebody. Or Celeste pens it, we agree, we sign on. Like, how do we have that process? How do we do that as a group? I don't think we have that answer and it's not helping us. Well, and that's that's why not getting funding was so disappointing because the last meeting I was at, Cameron was talking about the training that can be done based on other really effective groups. And so that was my hope because I feel the same way. Like we need to know how can we be powerful and effective? Because we are, I mean, the snow removal is an equity issue. Because people without transportation and no sidewalks, like we're seeing people really suffer every single day because of snow removal. But I don't, you know, we don't know as a body yet how to do that. And so that's the compelling um, argument for me for the funding is like we're, we, it's all important, but unless we really know how to really effectively use our power, and I don't know what that is. You know. So that's a priority. And, and 
you mentioned, you know, great being the, is it G-A-R-E or G-E-R, mm -hmm. or whatever, and so funding would be necessary to do that, to bring somebody in to help us get a better understanding of what's been effective in other areas, as you mentioned and what have you. But I, but I do really think that one thing that would help us a whole lot is, one thing that gets me is we're kind of all over the place all at once. You know, we we don't we don't get uh, you know sort of like I like I said preaching a lot of times we start out chasing deer and wind up chasing rabbits, and uh, uh, we do need to decide what we're going to hit and how we're going to hit it and hit it and then move to the next thing. So I don't for me. Um, I'm just trying to think, like, what's the impediment or what's the barrier to us having that clarity around how to use our voice and kind of what things to weigh in on? Um, and to me, us being clear about that is actually the, the avenue to getting some funding. Um, I don't know if our impediment right now is money so much as it is time. Like, I feel like really we need a couple, you know, three or four hour sessions together to, to kind of come up with our annual game plan. And we could answer those questions of like, how are we gonna write letters? You know, how are we gonna decide who testifies? Is there a regular report on a monthly basis? And we could identify these are the hot topics we know we wanna weigh in on this year. Um, I think for that, we just- But that's the inequity. Well, well, hold on, I mean, I think for that, like we need time, which is hard, and we need someone to facilitate us. I could probably get someone from my firm to do it for free, it, but it also comes up, we just all have to have time to put into it. I'm just saying, it feels always like it's the burden on the agencies and the people of color and the agencies that represent people of color and those with the least resources who have to again carve into our personal time to do the hard work and it's just, at this moment in time, incredibly exhausting for all of us. And I know I'm stating the obvious, um, but... See, that's why if we had a paid municipal employee that was dedicated to equity, chief equity officer, it would take the burden, a lot of the burden, off of this committee. Well, the original CEO got fired for doing the work. Exactly. And and so now the CEO that replaced the original uh, uh, chief equity officer is doing something totally different and foreign to what that position is supposed to be doing. I just thought Taffy has her hand up. You want to go? Thank you. Um, sorry for not being present. Um, there, I, I wish I was in there. Um, is but because Junior's position is under the 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 mayor is reporting to the mayor. Is there an interest in this group to have conversations with him about you know like maybe improving right or or ways that he could advocate for the things that we need him to do um, so that because what I see is that that position has so much power that can bring people together right and that was the whole goal around is to create better systems for all of us um, and so I feel in my heart that junior you know may be willing to do that if if we offer like a chance like like equity work is, is forever, right? It's, it's gonna take some time. It's not going to be solved, you know, within within our, our lifetimes, unfortunately, um, because we're, we're, we're going against things that have been set way before we existed. Um, however, like, I feel that like, you know, part of, of this equity work is also like grace and, and helping people navigate systems that they find themselves in. Right, um, and then so like, that's what I'm, I'm thinking of when I when we talk about um, like our current chief equity officer, 
um, and how we can we can work with them to be in the role where there is bridging, right? Be more of a bridge. Um, you know, like there's a wall there right now, but you know, vertical vertical walls can turn into horizontal bridges. So I mean, and that's that's what I think. Um, and so hopefully, hopefully, if Junior is open to that. I would hope that this team would also be open to to offering that grace and and seeing if there's if there's some changes you know that could happen within this this um, this current administration. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and so that's that's what I think. Yeah. The issue, and, and, and let me be frank about it, the issue is not a junior issue. No. It's not. It's not a personal affront. To, to him as a person, it's not a junior issue, it's an administrative issue. And, and, and it's an assignment issue, it's not a junior issue. And, and, and he just happens to be in the position uh, right now. And I don't know that our interfacing on the level that we need to interface would be so effective relative to his assignment. <laughs> You know, it's not a junior issue. We don't have an issue with junior per se as an individual. It's 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 above him. Yeah. But I guess what I'm hearing Taffy say is that it would be if we did uh, if we were able to come together for a planning session that having junior there um, potentially could be informative to him and you know, we could develop that relationship and see if that's Effective, I, I thought we tried that. Yeah. Um, and the invitation not only was extended, um, but I, I thought I, I, he was in the room yes. when we said, you know, you're welcome. So, Personally, I feel if a, if a person is passionate about the work, and this is just how I am, then I would do it even as a volunteer. And so I would hope that a paid person would be passionate because they're getting paid to do this work and would be here. So that's just me. Yeah. And, and you pay you pay by assignment, you know, for doing what you're responsible to do as it relates to what you're assigned to do. And so the bottom line is, unless he is assigned to handle equity work on behalf of the Anchorage community, then then it's not incumbent upon him to do that. So just to time check, we just have about five minutes left. Um, and, and also just to kind of re, re, regroup with our agenda. So can we have some agreement or decision about if we want to have a kind of planning session? And it was going to suggest if we did want to, um, I think we should definitely go for the latter half of January or even I'm just thinking about the events that are coming up that we heard about earlier. Can I share? Hannah had her hand oh, up. Oh, and... Hannah, please go ahead. I just wanted to clarify what is Junior's official title, position, role, etc. <laughs> title is Chief Equity Officer. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He is the Chief Equity Officer. Thank you. So if we do want to do a planning session, I was going to suggest that maybe, Jasmine, are you able to do doodle calls? Do what? You can do that doodle call. Cheers. I don't know. I've never done it, so okay. I don't know. Okay. I was going to su suggest that maybe one of us could figure that out. If you can't do it, I can do it. Um, but I guess that's what I think we should decide is 
do we want to have some kind of a planning session? And maybe then at our next meeting, we could sort of set the agenda for that. So are you suggesting a planning session where we like actually get into like what's the sixty thousand dollars so there's actually something at the next or in a future committee meeting where we can say here's the suggested budget and really have something to work off from feedback in the committee so that there's we're bringing something versus trying to build out that budget here in the committee meeting that's your suggestion right yeah and also some of the other things that people mentioned like you know how do we submit testimony what's the letter writing process what's the approval process uh, who, who gives testimony? Is there a regular time that we're reporting to the assembly? Um, you know, do we want to improve our relationship with the chief equity officer? And then also, what are the sort of main topics we're most interested in? Maybe just right now or for the next six months? Yes. Yeah, I'm tired. I'm with Lori. I'm tired. But I think we need a planning session because we're not going to get it done in these hour and a half meetings. And I want to come here for this hour and a half and be very effective when we have Felix, when we have Cameron, sending messages that are very clear to, from us to the assembly about what it is we are asking from them. And so if that's a work session that we need, to, I need to dedicate four hours to, then I want to do that because I want us to be effective in this hour and a half. And, and the other thing is, with our, with our time, what we do need to decide is what we're going to do in our next meeting. I think it would also be good for us to have a discussion around what areas we want to prioritize at this moment. Because I'm hearing homelessness, where I'm hearing, you know, and, and, and is, is there already opportunities in other committees to have those discussions around those other issues, right? Like. If there's, if there's other avenues, then we should probably take it there so they can also be included in the equity um, conversations versus having a silo, everything equity, right? Um, and so like we just, and then like prioritizing from there, like it's, if it's gonna be around health equity, if it's going to be more around, you know, social services equity, like what, what are the areas of, you know, if it's gonna be education focused, like what, what are areas that we want to like prioritize um, and, and then go from there. So. Yeah. And I feel like we're all kind of feeling down, but I actually think that this document is highly impressive and I'm, I appreciate getting that done in a short period of time and the fact that we've come together and we have a committee and I think there's a lot of things for us to celebrate. That's right, we forgot to do our celebrations. Yeah, yeah, I was holding on to my things and I'm speaking in now that I, I feel like we're losing okay. our time. Oh. But, but <laughs> maybe, I, I just do want to say that. Maybe we could see if there's any audience participation. Oh, yeah. Hearing none, um, can we extend for five minutes so we can make a decision? Is there any objection to that? Okay. What's Oh. Um, should we have a... Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this, this is Panna. Could yeah. you repeat that? Um, I just asked if we could extend for five minutes. I have no problem with that. Okay. Awesome. Great. Just so we can kind of come to a decision. Uh, so does anyone want to make a motion about planning session and our topic for the next meeting? Oops. Trigger my gun. Come on. I make a motion we have a planning session. I'll, I'll second. And I'll third. <laughs> Any discussion on that? I think sooner is better than later. Okay. Um, I agree. Sooner is better than later. Let's pick a date and move on. Okay. Um, I want to be mindful of yeah, I've got events and time and... Do we want to do a doodle poll or do we want to just look at our calendars right now? Doodle. I think there's okay. a lot of people Let's not do here. a doodle. Yeah, so we can hear from other committee members. So Jasmine and I can figure that piece out. Um, okay. Any more discussion? Okay. Have a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, motion carries. Okay, so look out for a Google poll and then at our January meeting, 
do we want to talk about hate speech? Bye, Bye Celeste. Celeste. Have a great Happy holidays. Bye. See you. I think we should use the build off of the planning session if it happens before this assembly committee meeting, before the committee meeting, that we should bring from the planning session those things. Let's get through those topics. That's my suggestion. And then let's, when we have some ground of where we're going in that planning session, then I think we should dip into some of these other topics in future meetings. But I don't want us to get like progress on the planning session, then go into a totally different topic, then go back to the planning session in February. I think that's backwards. Okay, I think our, so our next meeting is the 26th of January. Um, so is so it you're saying you'd like to try and have our planning session before our next meeting? Correct. Okay. I mean, I just think like, I, I want people to participate and I want, but like if we look at the second week of January and having a planning session, people are back from school or I whatever. Can't, can't. Can't. But I, whatever we can find, like I would suggest we try hard. Okay. And for some reason, these aren't showing up on my calendar. I'm surprised all the time. Yeah, What's it's going on there? okay. We can talk about that when we're done. Um, okay. I, I honestly think for me, it's going to be hard to do the planning session before the 26th. Um, it to be hold up. Um, okay, so, but either way, we could use the January session to, to either, like, debrief from the planning session or prep and not do a separate topic. Yeah, and I would just say, I mean, you, you two are the co-chairs because we trust you too. So, you know, if, if we find that, like, you go to make the agenda in January and you think it's actually like, we're not ready to have the planning session, these are other topics and we're gonna talk in circles and let's have a focused conversation in January and ask the assembly attorneys to come. I'm not opposed to it. I just want us to, I don't want us to have false starts. I want us to have momentum. So if we start something, let's finish it. And so if we're not ready for the planning session by this assembly, by this committee meeting in January, then I suggest then yeah, let's have a carve out, have the attorneys come and really dig into a topic and get some outcomes. If we can do that, let's just let's not do false starts. I'm, okay, you know, I want us to get some momentum. So let's um, we can regroup, Pastor May and I and Felix and Cameron and just kind of we decided we did want to have a planning session. Um, it would be awesome if we could do it before the next committee meeting. For me personally, that seems unlikely. Um, but so that's where this is coming from. You said unlikely. Unlikely for me to have it before the next. Is our next? Yeah. Meeting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but we can decide in, unless any other discussion on that topic. Okie dokie. Anything else? We'll just save our celebrations for next time. Yeah. Okay. Happy holidays, everyone. And thank you for being here. Look forward to seeing you in January. Thank you. Happy, happy holidays. Holiday. Yeah, thank you. Take care. And I say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Yeah.